TV KPM. Yes, hello everybody. Welcome to Success SPM 2022. My name is Chris and this is where we're going to be focusing on strategies and techniques on answering SPM questions. And for today's episode, we are focusing on kesusasteraan Inggris, okay? So without wasting any more time, let's welcome today's teacher. That's right, SPM candidates, for today's lesson, I have Teacher Hanin here with me. Hi, Miss Hanin. Hi, Chris. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing very good and it's so nice to see you here again. Now, before we proceed with today's uh, SPM revision, I would also want to welcome uh, Teacher Saiful as our sign language interpreter for this episode. Thank you very much, Mr. Saiful. Okay, well, without further ado, let's also welcome our pupils on Google Meets. Can we do that? Yes, definitely. All right, go ahead, Miss Anin. Okay, so students, now we are actually joined by SMK Convent Ipoh. And with us are four lovely ladies. So the first one is Esther. Hi, Esther. Hello. And the second one is Noor Batrisha. Hi, Patricia. Hello. Our third student today is Noor Ain Najwa. Hi, Ain. Hi. And last but not least, Kirtiga. Hi. Hi, Kirtiga. Okay, there you go. Our friends on Google Meets, as well as those watching at home, I would like to ask you this. Are we ready for today's mm. class? If you're ready, give me a double thumbs up. <laughs> There you go. All right, Miss Hanin, what are we going to learn today? Okay, Chris. So today we are actually going to look at the short story Birds of Paradise. Mm. This is actually one of the story that is needed for students to learn if they are taking short stories. Okay, so without further ado, let's go into it. All right. So, short story is actually uh, from one of the textbooks. So this is Anthology of Short Stories, the pink textbook. Students are familiar with this. Now in this textbook, as you know, there are six short stories that you must read and understand and revise all. Okay, three of them, Embracing Your Shadow, Thieving Daughter, Sambal Without Anchovies. These are written by Chua Ko Yi. And then we have Turning 30, Birds of Paradise and Winter Hibiscus. These are written by Min Fong Ho. Mm. So today, we are going to focus on the fifth short story, Birds of Paradise. Birds of Paradise. Yep. What page is this, teacher? So this is actually, I think, starting from the 50 Fif something. 50... Ah, okay. Got 49, it. page 49. Good. Okay. All right. Now, before we go into our revision, I would like to remind the students again on the division of the paper. Right. So the paper is called SPM Kasus Sastra and Ingres 2206. That's the code. In this paper, it's divided into three sections. The first section is prose. The weightage is 35 marks. Section B is drama, 35 marks. And last but not least, poetry. So today we're going to look at prose part. Okay, so just a reminder for the student, in each of this uh, for section A, uh, it is actually divided into four sets of questions. The first question and the second question is on short story, where it's going to be, the question A is actually passage-based question. It holds the weightage of 15 marks. Mm. The second question is the B open-ended question, where the weightage is 20 marks. So each one of these questions holds a very heavy weightage. However, please, I would like to remind the students, there are four sets of questions, choose only one. All right, darlings yeah. out there, only one question for section A. Okay, so let's go into our short story, Birds of Paradise. We okay. don't want to waste any more time here, Chris. Yes, let's time do it. Time is ticking. Right, so let's talk about the story 
uh, uh, Birds of Paradise. Okay, so just a quick synopsis. So what's the story about? So the story actually begins and starts at the setting of a beautiful paradise, which is actually an island filled with birds. And the birds are only chickens. Mm -hmm. So their job is actually to lay eggs every morning. They are being guarded by the head chief rooster uh, and his team of roosters. So that is, they handle the security, the one who guards them, and of course, the one who uploads the law, right? So these chickens, one day, there's a chicken called Lani. And Lani was just looking up at the sky and then thought, hmm, what if I can fly? So, can I fly? Please, can a chicken fly? Uh, no. No. Okay, maybe a little maybe, bit. Yeah, a bit, a bit but not soaring up the sky. Yeah. So, Lani decided to do something completely different. She's not going to lay her eggs. I mean, sorry, she lays her eggs, but after that, she has a bit of extra activity, which is she was going to start practicing flying. Oh. However, she was caught by the chief rooster and his team of guards. And because she was doing something abnormal, she was caught with some, a few other characters, which are a few chickens who were decided to sing and dance. These are completely different, like abnormal activities that they cannot do. So what they did was the chief rooster kidnapped them, punished them under the submarine, and then asked them to conform back to society. So they did. However, came to a certain point where the instinct to fly came back again and she decided to pursue it because she felt that is her identity. Mm. Then she, at the very end, she got caught again by the new team and that team decided, now there's a new team of a uh, chief rooster and that new chief rooster allowed her to embrace her new identity. So there's a change there. Okay, so at the very end, everybody received their happy ending. Okay, next, we're going to go into plot. All right. All right. Okay, so this is the plot diagram. The plot diagram, as we can see, there's the beginning, the rising action, the climax, the falling action, and the resolution. All right, all right. Can I ask my students a question? Yeah. Why okay. Not? okay, Esther. In this part of the diagram, which one are your two favorites? Yes, teacher. My two favorite is rising action and falling action. Ah, okay. Very interesting. This is called the build-up of the story. So how it begins, how it builds up, goes to the problem, problem mm. how we want to find a solution, and then we found the resolution, which is the happy ending. Ah, okay? okay? And then... Here is a bit of the plot summary for the short story. So, as we know, according to each of those steps, the first one is exposition. The story begins with Lani has a contented life but wanted to fly. The second one begins the conflict that she has with the chief rooster and how he rep reprimanded her to stop flying. Okay, and then we have the rising action where she still quietly practices. And then she found some birds who are also practicing their hobbies, singing and strutting their feathers. And then came the climax. She was kidnapped and she was tortured. And then because she has to go back and revert and conform back to society's rule. However, in the falling action, because there is a new leader, then they could not deny their instinct. So they decided it's okay. Mm. Let me just be myself and let me embrace my new identity as a new species of birds. And then, last but not least, the happy ending. Because there's a new chief rooster. So this mm -hmm. new chief rooster okay. is open-minded. Okay, It's not conforming himself to the conservative values too much. And he allows the birds to keep their new identities and to, in a way, um, be together with all the other birds to create a new kind of citizen. Ah, mm. wow. I haven't read this book or this short story, but already just by seeing the synopsis and the plot, I'm already very, very interested. But first, teacher, is it okay to take a short break before we proceed any further? Yes, okay. no problem. For our pupils watching at home, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back here with teacher Hanin for Kesusasteraan Inggris. Success SPM 2022. Didik TV
KPM Didik TV KPM Hi everyone, welcome to Success SPM 2022 with me Chris MJ and today we are focusing on kesusasteraan Inggris together with Miss Hanin on the short story of Birds of Paradise. Alright Miss Hanin, what are we going to learn in this next segment teacher? Okay, so we've already gone through the synopsis, we've also gone through the plot. Okay. So what is the next important element? Let's go into characters. Now before we go into characters, I like to ask one of the students, right Ayn, who is the protagonist and the antagonist of the story? is Lani and the antagonist is the old chief rooster. Okay, very good. So you have protagonist and antagonist and to those of you who are watching and especially taking literature, you know what protagonist and antagonist is. Just to refresh your mind, protagonist is the hero, antagonist is the villain. Okay, mm, okay. so without further ado, let's go towards characters okay so now we're going to go into our main hero Lani right who's the main protagonist of the story all right to all of those of you who are uh, watching this you may use the word protagonist and you may use the word hero in your SPM answer ah, both okay. is accepted so don't worry too much oh teacher I forgot the word pro 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 what am I gonna read <laughs> hero is good enough okay, okay. All right, so who is Lani? So initially, she thought that she's a chicken who just lay eggs every day, okay? And then she had this instinct. She wanted to fly. And then that is where she found she has a new identity, okay? So what is her identity? For those who have read the story, you would know that Lani is not a chicken, but instead she is a sparrow because sparrow also lay eggs. Okay, and then when you're looking at characters and characteristics, of course, first of all, the overview of the character. How does she look like? Later on, we're looking intrinsically her characteristics. And these are the important characteristics that you have to remember. One is on bravery. She is a brave little sparrow, okay, mm -hmm. because she was able to go against the rules and norms of the island and go against the orders of the chief rooster who's pretty much like a dictator in that, on that island. Then you can see her determination. Lani is someone who believes and feels that she has this talent of flying. So what she did, even though she, they said, don't fly, she decided to keep on flying and she did not quit, even when she was threatened and order, ordered to do so. And the most important characteristic, the third one, which I think every single one of us must have, is the spirit to never give up, okay? Because in the story that we learn, our heart goes to Lani because even under torture and punishment, at the end of the day, she still wanted to fly because it is her passion and she feels that that is her identity. So this is on Lani right now. Let's go into the next one. Ah, our villain, Old Chief Rooster. He is the antagonist of the story and what does he do? He rules the island and he ensures law and order. At the same time, the thing about the Old Chief Rooster, he holds on to all values and is quite conservative. So his characteristics, when you would like to discuss about him. He is a cruel person because in order to uphold his belief, he's willing to hurt others. He's willing to torture others just to make a point of not breaking the law. Then he's quite stubborn because some of the chickens have said, you know, please allow us to do something different and not just going to lay eggs. But he will not change his ways and he's quite close-minded to changes. In fact, he has this incredible fear of the unknown. If he feels it's weird, then he's like, no, I'm not allowing that on my island. So he only believes that there are two types of birds, hawks and chickens. And if you are different, then automatically you are the enemy. Mm, okay. okay. So these two are the main characters that student must know of. But do not forget our minor characters who helped also bring the story come to life. So 
the second chicken. Okay, so there is another chicken because when Lani was practicing, she met another bird who wanted to sing and was practicing singing. She too was caught by the chief rooster and also was tortured in the submarine. Then you have another chicken. Okay, the third chicken wanted to dance and strut his feathers, and again he too was caught by the chief rooster, also tortured in the submarine and had his tail and feathered slash. So if you can see the punishment, cutting of tongue, feathered slash, these are very extreme punishments. But lo and behold, there's another character at the end, the new chief rooster. Now this new chief rooster became the chief rooster after the old chief rooster has retired. And good thing about him, he's more accepting of new ideas and he's more accepting of the modern way. So he allow these three characters to embrace their new identity. That is the reason why I put a slash there. The second chicken is actually the Oriole and the Oriole has a beautiful singing voice. And the third chicken, of course, beautiful feathers. What Peacock. kind of it? Peacock, strutting the feathers. I see. All right. So these are the characters. Now. Finally, we're going to go into themes. Girls, any one of you can tell me one of the themes. Okay, Patricia? Um, uh, so one of the themes that I remember from the story is determination. Mm -hmm. In this story, Lani wanted to do things beside her usual job as a chicken, which is to fly. But the chief rooster was against it because it was stereotyped that only a hawk can fly. And hawks are seen as a threat in the chicken community. Even after she was punished, because she got caught, she still do the things that she wants to do, which is to fly. Her uniqueness did not isolate her, instead allowing her to bond closely with the other birds. And slowly, others accept her and was encouraged to figure their true identity as well, while also able to convince the new chief rooster to let her be herself. Fantastic. Okay, that is definitely, actually, that's a complete SPM answer. Wow. That is for <laughs> determination. Fantastic. So we're going to look at some of the themes. So let's go to the first one, self-discovery. Now, this story gives the overall idea of self-discovery and talking about the importance of challenging and trying new things to discover who you are. Chris, is self-discovery important? Yes, it is very, very important because if not, we cannot live to our fullest potential, this is what I believe. Exactly. And so, let's go to the... Once you have that self-discovery and self-belief, you need to be determined, all right? Just like Patricia has said, mm. and being true to yourself. So when you believe in yourself, you must hold on to that belief steadfast, even though you receive opposing views. And the next one is old versus new. We're not saying that traditions are wrong yep yep but we need to learn as time goes along modern ways of living we need to learn how to adapt the old values and the new values because we're evolving in our community we're evolving in our lifestyle so we have to find a place where both can work together mm. right Chris? so there are three themes for birds of paradise so self-discovery determination and being true to oneself and old versus new. But when uh, pupils are required to answer in SPM, right. um, usually how would the, the, the question be? Like would they ask, state all the three teams or how ah, would it be like? Sometimes the question can come out. Um, in the story, Birds of Paradise, uh, there is, uh, how does mean, uh, the story, Birds of Paradise, show the concept of determination? Ah. So the whole thing question is on determination okay. so first of all candidates must understand the theme right. and then find the evidences the thing here is many students do this they like to give a lot of opinion fantastic we want the opinion but must be backed up from evidence from the text. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, so it's similar to what Patricia answered earlier. Uh -huh. So even though she gave her opinions, but at the same time, she still tied it back to the story. Correct. I see, okay. I see. Because okay. if students just write their opinion without relating it to the text, then it becomes a normal English essay. Mm, mm, it's okay. not no longer Kususastra and English answer. Yeah. And right. maybe we could also ask another pupil yep. based on their answers on what, maybe they could share a theme from, the birth, uh, from Birds of Paradise. What do you think? Teacher? Okay. Yep. Or, because we've already done themes, yes. I like to ask, okay, 
anybody can talk about the characters. Anything uh. about the characteristics that you would like to share? So, anybody? Okay, Kirtiga. I would like to talk about Lani's characteristic. Okay. She's, she's a never give up person. Right. Even though the old chief rooster tried to my, brainwash her that there's only two types of chickens, mm -hmm. uh, two types of birds, which is chicken and hawk, mm -hmm. but still she wants to fly. She never give up. Mm. Correct. Okay. Yep. So is this how uh, a people would answer yes. in a question? Right. Your opinion and evidence. Okay. okay. There you go. Thank you very much, teacher, for sharing on Birds of Paradise. And we just focused on themes and characters. But first, we're going to take a very short break. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back here on Success SPM 2022. d TV KPM D-Date TV KPM Hello everyone, welcome to Success SPM 2022. My name is Chris and I'll be accompanying you here where we are learning Kesusasteraan English together with Teacher Hanin and my friends on Google Meets from SMK Convent Ipoh. Hi, give us a wave. Alright, okay. So teacher, what are we going to learn next in the context of Birds of Paradise? Okay, Chris. So we've gone through the synopsis. We've gone through the plots and the characters and themes. Now, okay. this is where the crux happened. Ooh. We're going to go into the passage-based question A, which holds the weightage of 15 marks. All right. So I think a lot of the students are anxious and excited to know about this. Okay. So first of all, right, Chris, you have the book with you? Yes, page 49. Okay, it begins with 49. So our passage begins at 55, 55. and 56. So if all of you have the book at home, make sure you open it together with us. All right, so this is the passage that is in the question. All right, so I'm going to read it. Okay. It was very cold out inside the submarine. Lani had lost all sense of time even though the submarine was deep under the sea. Overhead spotlights beamed down on her, on her from all sides so brightly that she could barely make out the familiar face of the chief rooster staring at her behind the glare. She was rather cold and tired. For a long time now, she had been standing there, her wings tightly around herself for comfort as much as for warmth as the chief rooster bombarded her with questions. So, you admit you were flying, the chief rooster asked her, for what seems like the hundredth time. Lani nodded warily. Then you're a hawk, <clears throat> he declared. Lani shook her head. But you just admitted that you flew. Chickens don't fly. If you fly, you must be a hawk. Confused and bewildered, Lani remained silent. The chief rooster had sounded so logical that Lani did not dare to question his reasoning. Yet, deep down, she knew there was something wrong somewhere. And if you're a hawk, the bantam persisted, you must hate chickens. All hawks hate chickens. And so the whole cycle of questioning would begin again. Sometimes the chief rooster would be severe. At other times, quiet, almost gentle. But always, he insisted, there were two kinds of birds in the world, hawks and chickens. So from this passage, students must analyze according to the question given. And so let's look at the question. The question is, how does Min Feng Ho, the writer, make this scene such a significant moment in the story? Okay, so you have your passage, you have your question, students will be thinking, what am I going to do next? Hmm. Right, this big passage here, big, qu a short question, 15 marks. 15 marks. Big weightage of, um, uh, of marks. So what do you need to do, students, to not forget these are some of the things you need to do first. Number one, make sense of the question. Understand the question very clearly. Number two, I always tell this to my students and also all of you out there, identify and highlight the keywords in the text. Bring your highlighter pens. Any color you want to bring, bring into the hall. Third, read back the question using the assessment objectives, AOs, identify the relevant evidences, and then plan your essay. Okay. Teacher, what is AOs? 
HOs is assessment objectives. Assessment objectives. All right. So these are the very important uh, things that all candidates must know. You have AO1, AO2, AO3, AO4, Correct. which will be discussed after this later. Okay. All right. So here, I want most of all, let's look at number one. We're making sense of the question. This is the crux of everything. Because if you don't understand the question, can we answer it according to the requirements? So what usually happens? The students will go out of bounds. So first of all, let's look at the question. We're unpacking this. There are two things you need to focus on. The first one is how. So how we're looking at the process. How does Min Fong Ho make this scene such a significant moment in the story? So the first is how, the second is significant moment. Once you have unpacked this, you have highlighted these two key words, you must understand what it wants. So when we say how, we are going to focus on writer's craft. Writer's craft. Yep. How she does it. So students also have this understanding that when you learn literature, it's not just knowing about the story. You need to know your language devices, your tone, the dialogue, the plot. Okay, so writer's craft can also be um, the tone of the dialogue, the mood that is, is in there, the setting that is already in there, uh, in the story. Is the setting uh, like Birds of Paradise? It shows such serenity. However, it also talks about uh, the underlying cruelty behind this paradise. There is actually a negative effect, the, the dark secret of the, um, uh, uh, the island. Okay? Mm. So in this, uh, technically, let's look back. Okay, here, this whole passage is an interrogation. So this is important. When you have the passage, the candidates must identify what is the passage about. Is it a happy ending? Is it a romance? Is somebody trying to woo a girl? Here, specifically, is interrogation. And so, they have to focus on this part. Okay. Now, I like to ask the girls, can you go beyond this part? Girls? Yes or no? All right, Ayn. They cannot. It's okay. I can you repeat uh, your answer. We, uh, you, we couldn't catch you earlier. Uh, no, they cannot uh, go beyond this part. They need to answer within the passage. Very good. Okay. So when some of the errors I find that candidates do is they know this part of the story. Okay. But then all of a sudden in their head, they're talking about the previous event. Ooh. So when they start writing, they right. talk about the previous events, which is actually a waste of time. So don't do that, students. Go straight into what is required inside here. There is a point, there's a reason why that uh, paper is written within a box, which means limit yourself just there, okay? So if this is talking about the interrogation, so we're going to look also at what uh, when we are unpacking the question, focus only on the interrogation, how the interrogation is developed. So when we're talking about development of interrogation, when you interrogate somebody, Chris, mm. what kind of tone of voice do you use? I, I, you are more firm, mm -hmm. more stern, mm -hmm. uh, more skeptical. Exactly. So when we understand about interrogation, when you look back at the passage, you're trying to find the keywords that's related to that. Ah, that is your okay. evidence, okay? That's why we look at language structure form. So don't forget, candidates, look at the passage, understand what the scene is about, then it's easier for you to find the evidence. Now that is the evidence part, how the process of Min Huang Ho writes the scene. Next one, we want to know significant moment. You have all the evidence. But how does it relate to the word significant? Now, significant has many, many, many kind of meanings. So you okay. have important. How is this scene important in the story? What does it contribute? Then you have impactful. How does this passage impact the character or impact the next event? So you 
need to know the whole story. Ah, uh, okay, so in this part of the analysis, we need to understand the whole story and not just the passage. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Yes, evidence-wise comes from the passage, but students must also understand the whole story. Mm, One okay. of the reason why I would like to focus on this is because certain students. Uh, don't think that the teachers don't know. We do know when we are actually sometimes marking your exam papers at school. Oh. What they do is, it's okay lah teacher, I focus on the passage only. Oh, uh, or so I do not read the story at all. So they don't read the story. Yes, and then they saw the passage and mm. it's like based on the passage. Okay, you, It's very difficult to do that because you need to have prior knowledge okay. of the characters, of the setting, of the story. Yes, it's based on the passage. The passage is just the evidence. Okay. Uh, but relating this whole uh, sequence of ideas, of your points, must come from the story. And also, would you say that to answer this question better to get um, better marks, it's much better to understand the full story? Yes, absolutely. Okay. That's why revising is important. And also look at every single section. Mm. Okay, do not uh, take it uh, lightly. I right. would say. And, and also, can we go back to the four uh, points that we're supposed to focus yes. on? So make sense of the question, which is what uh, you just shared with us. And what about identifying and highlighting the keywords in the text? Maybe. Uh, Miss Honey, you could share with us on what would you highlight from Def this question. Definitely. Okay. So, next one. All right. When we're looking at this. Okay. Okay. So, we want to know, we know that this is the interrogation part. What kind of words pop out to you when you're interrogating? And look at the setting. So, here you can see cold. The word cold is there. Cold. Right? Okay. When she's in that setting, you can see Lani has lost all sense of time. Right? Then you have that kind of interrogation. You're looking at the setting. It's in a submarine. The spotlight's beaming down on her. It's very bright. Mm. Is that very comfortable? No. No. It's actually sometimes a physical torture. This is a form of physical torture. And then you're also going to look at the characters. So you have the chief rooster and you have Lani herself. So let's look at Lani first. Okay, so this is number one. I'm going to put number one and okay. I'm going to put number two. So number one, how does Lani feel? She's cold and she's tired. All right. And then she also, uh, let's look at the word warily. So what does warily mean? She's tired. Exactly. Fatigue. Yep, fatigue. Okay. And then she looks at the emotion confused and bewildered. And she remains silent. Using this, once students have already highlighted this, this is where you start to play. Mm. Okay, why is she feeling confused? How would you feel in interrogation? And let's look at the chief rooster. He's glaring. He's bombarding her with questions for the hundredth time. So these are all the process of interrogation that they are doing again and again and again. Okay. okay. So all of this, and yet when they're bombarding her, he needs to sound logical. Because you're trying to sway the meaning, uh, the, the beliefs of the birds. Okay, so this is how we would identify and highlight keywords in the passage. Exactly. So is, is um, everyone online and also watching at home, are you all clear on this? Give me a thumbs up if you're clear. All right, I've got double thumbs up also. Good. Okay, good, good, good. Um, right. And let's go to the next part of the, the steps, right? All we right. We're supposed to focus on, which is Sorry. reading back the question using the AOs and last but not least, planning the essay. So this is, a, I'm very curious to ask more on this. When you say plan your essay, how many words should a student write or how many paragraphs? What, what would you recommend, teacher? Okay, so many people ask us this. There is actually no limit of words. Oh, no limit? Yeah, okay. but there's a limit of time. Right. Remember, you have six essays to write in two hours and a half. Mm, okay. So one set of questions is 55 minutes. So for this, it's 20 minutes. So 20 minutes, how many points do you want? You know, it's very difficult to say how many points. I would say around three, four. Mm. Okay. But remember, every point must have evidence. Every point must have analysis and your point of view. Okay. okay. So um, maybe you would... Maybe three points for for twenty for twenty minutes, um, and is there a minimum? There's no minimum count of words. No. 
Okay. Mm, so it's just based up to them, all right? But remember, I know that the most interesting thing right now is the AOs. So AOs is always going to be number one about AO1, your textual evidence. Mm. AO2 is your deep understanding of your textual evidence. Three will be your uh, language and literary devices, and four will be your uh, point of view, your personal criticism. That right. is very important. Okay. okay. So this is how we can get 50 marks for this question. Yeah. How does Min Fong go? This is a lot of marks here. Right, right, right. Okay. So once again, does everybody understand the four <coughs> steps that you have to focus on whenever you are faced with this question? Give me a thumbs up if you do. All right. So, teacher, can we have a quick recap of the four steps for pupils watching at home as well? Thank you. Okay, definitely. All right. So, before we go into answering, like uh, before you start to write, make sure this is very. Uh, you have understood it. This is very. Uh, you have uh, and you practice this. Mm. So, number one is make sense of the question. That is important. Number two is identify and highlight the keywords. Number three, read back the question. And number four, plan your essay. There you go. Thank you very much, teacher. And I'm sure everyone watching at home, as well as my friends on Google Meets, are more clear on how you can score better for this part of our literature paper. But with that, we'll take a short break, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back here at Success SPM 2022. DD TV KPM. Didet TV KPM Hi people, so welcome to Success SPM 2022 and today we are focusing on Kesusasteraan Inggris on the short story of Birds of Paradise together with Teacher Hanin. Alright teacher, so for the next segment, what are we going to focus on teacher? Okay, so we've already unpacked the question. Now let's look at the passage. Mm, how are we okay. going to unpack that and how we're going to elaborate it? And that's your answer. So, let's go to the AO. So we were talking about AOs, AOs. So what exactly is AOs? Now, to all the candidates out there, please remember this is pretty much your lifeline in your answering. You need to understand all the AOs and pretty much if you want to memorize, please do so. So the first one is AO1. Show in-depth knowledge of literary text supported by textual evidence. So your answer must have textual evidence. Number two, Explore text beyond surface meaning to reflect a deeper awareness of content. So you have to give your elaborative answer on the textual evidence. What does it mean? Right. Because you have the figurative meaning. Now you're going to, un to unpack that figurative meaning. And then AO3. So you analyze and evaluate ways in which language and literary devices are used in the text. Language and literary devices are techniques. These are the things that they remember. Your plot, your metaphor, simile, personification, imagery, what are the symbols used. These are the things that some students are quite afraid of, but it's okay. They're quite actually quite simple. And AO4, you communicate personal and critical response. Must have your personal response. Do not, don't give your own ideas. We want to hear your voice. Mm, uh, it okay. is very important in SPM. This is your higher order thinking skill. Okay, so let's go into it. So we've already just now highlighted some of the words, some of the key phrases when you are unpacking this passage. So these are the words that we have unpacked. So using all of these evidences, okay? So here, in this whole passage, you have the word coal, you have the submarine, you have the spotlights, you have uh, Lani finding herself comfort, but then being interrogated by bombardment of questions again and again. What is the accusation that she is a hawk? All right. And then she said she did want to fly, but she's not a hawk. But from that on, the chief rooster felt that that is her uh, admitting her guilt. Okay. And all of these words is important because here is actually your answers. How are you going to elaborate it? So let's look at number one. Show in-depth knowledge of literary text supported by textual evidence. We've already highlighted all the textual evidence. So how are we going to unpack it? So the word submarine. All right. So 
when we're unpacking this, we want to know what does this scene reveal to us. So the word submarine, deep under the sea, cold, spotlight beam on her face. It's very tiring for her. She feels very weary. So here, this is what students should answer. Okay, so you've already have your evidence. This is what we want to see from the students themselves. So this is an example. Lani was brought down into the submarine of the chief rooster where she was interrogated for her crimes. So the submarine was under the sea, away from the citizen, because we see submarine was deep under the sea. You need to ask yourself, why? And you need to answer that in your essay. It was deep under the sea, away from the citizen, so the citizen will not see actually how the chief rooster upholds his law. She was put in an uncomfortable situation because they wanted to break her spirit so that she would confess to her crime and admit that she was breaking the law. So this is from Lani's point of view. And then, let's look at the points and evidence from the chief rooster. So the chief rooster was saying, admission of flying, children, uh, chickens don't fly, you must be a hawk. The cycle, the whole cycle of question will begin again and again. These are words from the passage. Use them as your evidence. And when you want to analyze it, when you want to elaborate it, this is one of the sample un uh, answers. The chief rooster interrogated Lani, categorizing her as a hawk, the enemy of chickens. So he would smartly and cruelly bombard her again and again using different tactics of gentleness and severity and repeating the same question in the hope that Lani would be desperate enough to admit her crime. He holds steadfast to his belief. This is what students have to answer in this kind of manner because we want to see whether students are able to analyze the evidence mm, well. Okay. Okay. So that is based on evidence. Now we're looking, we have the evidence. We want to go beyond surface meaning. What else can we dig up? What else can the scene reveal us? So on the point of Lani, so from Lani's perspective, as a result of getting caught by the chief rooster and his team, Lani was tortured non-stop and she was interrogated and had physical discomfort. The reason why they have physical discomfort is to make her feel, and uh, the examples of uh, physical discomfort is feeling cold in the submarine because they want to break her mental spirit. Because once you break your mental spirit, would you actually agree with your tormentor, Chris? Yes. Yes. I just so want to go easy. home. Exactly. You just want to get, uh, get it over with, yeah. right? So, but the good thing about Lani is that you can see in the passage, she said, why? Yet she didn't understand what this is about. There's the conscience still debating. So we are actually wanting students to give that. Mm. We want to see whether you can understand that voice is her conscience. So when students say conscience, of course merit. It's still because the conscience is debating on the wrongness of the whole situation. And her inner voice is trying to hold on to her truth. So we have that. And now looking at the chief rooster, looking from the chief rooster's perspective, he interrogates uh, Lani with cruelty because he hopes that Lani would admit her, her guilt. Doing this allows him to execute his power, to punish her. Okay? So we want students to use this kind of words. Why did he interrogate her so badly? What is the chief rooster afraid of? So first of all, he's afraid of losing his power. He wants to execute his power. I am the chief rooster. I am the one who controls this uh, island. You must follow me. Or else he will lose control of one chicken. If you lose control of one chicken, mm. what would happen? Everyone else would probably follow along. Exactly. So the chief rooster also has a characteristic. He is, a, he is power hungry. Mm. So students, if they start using this characteristic, because you've already learned synopsis, plot, theme, characteristic, setting, use all those information to analyze the situation of the passage. And here, we can see that when he changes the tone, he is actually put, trying to put her in a state of disorientation and confusion. Why? Because he's a master manipulator. So if students are able to use all these words, of course, like you're married. This is where your marks are coming in. Mm, okay. uh, so we want to see you using these kind of words to explain the situation. All right. Ha, AO3. Okay, my, my students will yeah. be like, oh, AO3 teacher, language and retrievers, they're so scared of it. 
it's okay, relax. Because technically this is the technical part, right? We want to see, because remember when you say how does, go back to the question, how does Min Fong Ho make this scene significant in the play? So, uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the story. So, we are looking at writer's craft. You ha please, if we're talking about Min Fong Ho, you must put her name in. All right. So we want to see what kind of technique she uses. So she, as a writer, she uses words and phrases that are contrasting. The moment we hear the see the word contrast, that is where we want to see the answer in student. The contrasting word is she nodded her head. Then she shook her head. Why nod and shake at the same time? Because she was disoriented at that time. But to see that, it actually helps us as a reader feel confused. And we are also as if we are in part of that, of that interrogation. We are so confused. What's going on here? And the way that the chief rooster uses different tones, so we want to say the tone, the mood of the, of the um, scene. This is what students must be aware of. Use this word, tone, mood, the setting. Okay? During the, uh, so the tone, different tones of, uh, that is being used by the chief rooster in the interrogation is because uh, what are the tones? He questions her. Mm. Then all of a sudden he declares. So when you question a person and then you state, it's very confusing. What are you trying to do with me? Are you questioning me or are you stating my guilt? Yeah. Okay? And at the same time, speaking in a logical manner, he would cajole and then severely uh, talk to her. So cajoling is gentle. Then all of a sudden, screaming or using high voices. So it's pretty much as if you're stuck in a in a parallel universe yeah. where they use, you do not know what is reality, what is up and what is down. So when students are able to explain that situation, that is where your marks will come in. Okay, last but not least, this one is your favorite. I know many students fav uh, favors this so much. Communicate and inform personal and critical response to literary text. So this is your point of view. When you've read that passage, how do you feel about it? So what is your opinion in this scene? So the scene is significant. Remember, go back to the question, must have significant. So this scene is significant because we see that the interrogation is a form of power play by the chief rooster. Okay? He kidnapped Lani and his friends. Go back to the evidence. Uh, in the name of the law and asserts his power to torture them so that they would conform to the norms of society that the chief rooster had worked hard to uphold. So, the next sentence is important. I feel for Lani as she was physically and mentally tortured just for trying to fly. She also had to endure the pain of trying to hold on to her beliefs and later succumb to following what the chief wanted just so her torture would end. That is extremely disturbing as I feel when one denies the truth of oneself, then their identity is lost. Now, if you can see this, there's not a lot of... There is evidence, but yeah. mainly point of view. Ah. Mainly comes from the student. Most importantly, to all my darling students out there, do not forget this word. I. I. Your response, you must use I. So, I feel, I think, in my opinion, that is a very, very important phrase, uh, phrase, phrases for you to use when you are answering this kind of question. So, let's go back a bit. So, when you have a passage or when you have any kind of points, remember your point must go through the A01, alright? And then you go to A02, uh, talk about beyond surface meaning. We're going to look at A03 and AO4. Every point must have the AO treatment. One point, you have to go through AO1, AO2, AO3, AO4. Only then is your answer complete. Uh, so AO4 is what you would say is the final paragraph of exactly. the answer? Yep. Okay. For one point. For one point? For one point. Okay, I understand. Uh, AO1, AO2, AO3, AO4. As you must give the treatment of your points, each three mm. of your points. Uh, it's better for you to go through the treatment of all AOs. Okay. So it, it, it secures your answer. Right. Okay. And teacher, I have a question. I, I'm sure other pupils watching might relate to as well. But I have experience getting a writer's block ah. during the exam. Yes. So what can we do about this? Okay. Don't panic. Number one, please okay. don't panic. Relax. Relax. 
You'll be fine. Okay. okay. Go back. Why do we have writer's block? It's not because we don't know, Chris. Mm. We have too many answers in our head. Which one is important? Relax. Go back to the beginning. The beginning. Yes. Okay. Go back to the passage. Read back the first paragraph. Go through the answers of the first paragraph first. Analyze the first paragraph, then the second paragraph, then the third paragraph. So, once you are able to put it in sequence, you'll be fine. Okay, so remember pupils, don't panic. Uh, to Esther, Kritiga, Ayn and Patricia, don't panic. It's all good. Uh, just go back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. And also, we want to be careful with the time, correct teacher? Correct. So, how many minutes would you uh, recommend each student to take on this part or this question? Okay, this question is around 25 minutes. 25 minutes. Uh -huh. So for the whole prose question, you have two questions. You have your passage-based question, you have your open-ended question. Okay. Passage-based question is 15 marks. Uh, open-based question is 20 marks. Mm. So, play around around 25. Don't go above that. Okay, 20, uh, play around you still have minutes. other essays yeah. to write. Okay, 25 okay. minutes. And also, uh, Miss Hanin, could you share with us maybe like, as, as we have come to the end of today's episode, maybe you'd like to share with us a summary or some tips for our SPM candidates watching? Yes, okay. Number one, before I go into the tips, I would like to ask all the students to relax, read the question, don't worry about it. So, let's go to our final checklist. Always look back at your final checklist. So the first checklist is, read the question, okay? And then, read the passage. So for this, you have two things you have to do. Question and passage. Okay. And then you unpack the keywords and phrases in both the question and the passage. And then, of course, number four, you just choose the relevant ones. Don't choose the ones that are not needed. Then you plan your essays with AOs in mind. Push aside all the irrelevant evidences. You then start writing the essay. And last but not least, read back your essay. Do that. Number eight is important. <laughs> All right, there you go. Eight steps for your final checklist. Is everyone clear so far? If you're clear, give me a double thumbs up on Google Meets as well as those watching at home. Nice. Everyone is, even for me watching this, I feel more confident in answering Birds of Paradise. But with that, teacher, I would like to say thank you very much for today's class. And thank you everyone for watching. That is all from us today here at Success SPM. My name is Chris MJ. We'll see you again only on d -Day TV KPM. Bye everyone. All the best for SPM. Bye.